positive comment. And then, of course, our one of our judges here locally, he was here. His daughter is actually Dr. Irwin. If you know Dr. Irwin, his his daughter is married to the judge, and they, they come, and uh, they could not say enough positive things. They, they feel like they get rejuvenated here, and, and so that was positive. But from a personal level, I feel like I get something special. And it was, it was just, uh, there was several moments throughout our, our band, uh, our, our, bland, our band songs, that I felt the Lord just go down my back, and I thought, oh, sure, I'm just going to raise my hands. And I saw Brother Tubby out there, so I just felt so good. But I want to say tonight, I, I told Brother Willis, I, I sure appreciate Brother Willis feel, feeling the lead of the Lord and what he said because it didn't only touch me or all of our family when you talked about Mark, but there was a lot of people there that it encouraged them that because they a lot of people know you mark and uh it's encouraging so i just want to thank the lord for that uh i also i was this week i've been thinking about uh, getting ready for those new year goals brother white and i took my pencil and pad out a couple of times this week and thought you know i want to be a sanctuary so what do i want to do to improve this year because I, there's things that I will continue to do. Uh, read my Bible. I thank the Lord. If he lets me stay well, it'll be 18 years in a row that I've read my Bible. And all but, I think it was 26 days now and uh, 14 years. I, that's all, I've only missed 16 or 17 days in 14 years reading it every single day. And I'm not trying to boast I'm just saying you can do it if I can do it you can do it um, sister Janice Williams is not here tonight because she has pneumonia but she gave me a book to read because uh, it's called holy moments and after she read this this uh, doctor shared it with her and it's a real thin little book and she brought it to me to read and um, basically what it's talking about is every chapter goes through something different but uh, changing your life starting tomorrow. Don't, even if you're up in years like we're getting or whatever the situation is or, or if you're hurt at something or you're not doing something, it's called the next day, start doing something different. And uh, so I, she brought me that book, and I thought, well, I've got to start doing some things different because I've, I've been having some little blue days because, it's hard for someone like me that's worked two to three jobs my whole life to say, okay, I'm going to retire. I want to retire because my body says I want to retire, but my mind says you don't need to retire. And so there's a, 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 a battle going on with me. So, yeah, it's a tug of war. And when the phone rings from Houston, I cringe because I don't want to go back down there, but I enjoy it. But I, anyway, long story short, she brought me this book, so I thought I'm going to, has, I'm going to start writing down my goals because let me tell you something. I don't care how young you are, young people. I don't care how middle-aged you are or how old we are. We have to have goals because goals stimulates us to reach for something higher. And so, uh, of course, I put my Bible reading, and this year I, you know, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to do something different this year. And, and on Facebook, it keeps popping up these spiral-bound Bibles and getting, but I don't even need that. I, I just need to do more there. I need to start reading more and in depth and studying more, so I've got that down. But, uh, you know, I, one thing that popped in my mind, uh, I want to encourage you young people, uh, a big group of young people up there uh, Sunday that I saw to start paying your tithes. Nana gives you ten dollars. Put a dollar in the pot. Uh, that could be on. I don't care how old you are. If you're not paying your tithes, start tomorrow. As a matter of fact, it's real funny because when a brother or sister Bud uh, was put over this church forty something years ago, 
uh, there wasn't a little cottage here to stay, so they stayed with Brother Tubby and I in our trailer house. And we had two kids, and uh, they would come every Friday night for service, and they would stay with us Friday night, and then they would leave Saturday early. He might go hunt with Brother Tubby, but he'd leave Saturday to go for service Saturday night. And every Friday night when we'd get home, it would be like 10 o'clock because we started services at 7.30. I would make a Frito pie. And I didn't have, we didn't have the money to go take them out. Of course, there wasn't a lot of restaurants anyway. Sometimes the hot biscuit was open. We had that back then. But uh, to go into the store and buy Fritos and a can of chili was hard on us. It cost, uh, we didn't have the money, but I would always get a, a can, Evelyn, and I'd put water in it to dilute it, to make, take it, make it go further. And then the cheese, we, Mama would give me some cheese or something, and I would grate it because Mama got all this cheese from somewhere, I don't know. But we would have that every Friday night, and uh, Brother Bud loved it. He loved it. But one night, I just started crying, and I said, Brother Bud... I can't afford nothing else. And if you looked in our pantry, he he could he talks about the time he couldn't afford to buy a Dr. Pepper or a Coke. Wasn't that right, Brother Tubby? And back then, I would sell Coke bottles, anything. I'd pick them up. We didn't have any food in our cabinet. We didn't have, did we, Emily? Didn't even have meat in the freezer. I didn't even have a freezer, y'all. <laughs> We were so terribly poor. And so Brother Bud said, Sister Tubby, I was he had already put me over as a secretary. He said, Are you paying your tithes? I said, Brother Bud, I can't pay tithes. We can't pay tithes. He said, I want you to do something for me. He said, I want you to start paying tithes. Not for me, but I just for you. You and Brother Tubby. And so Boy, we didn't sleep all night, did we, Brother Tubby? Because we just couldn't figure out how we were going to do that. Could buy a Coke, how we're going to pay tithes. So the next morning, um, that day, we started writing checks on our account. We only got paid, I think, at the hospital, I got paid every two weeks, and you would get paid weekly from, right? And so that Friday, that check came in, and we just wrote out a check. And, uh, oh, God, I was so scared. I didn't know how we were going to pull this off. And uh, do you know what happened? We started noticing that we had a little bit more money. And I can't, I couldn't add it up, y'all. I couldn't add it up. So I'm, the kids, I'm telling you, it. if you don't pay it, God's going to get it anyway. Just just pay your tithes. Just pay your tithes. So that's that's something I was thinking about today This, in this book I was reading. And so there's other things that, I, that I'm thinking I, I need to move more, move around more. I've, I've become stagnant in my um, exercising. And so got online, ordered me some kind of new treadmill they came out with that you can slide up under a bed. <laughs> probably just stay there <laughs> but Walmart had marked it down to $139 now I'm getting red <laughs> well it was 380 so I got it coming I don't know I'll tell y'all about it if it works <laughs> so there's just some different things but if we want to be a sanctuary y'all and I know this is just rambling but if we want to serve God and we want to give it our all guess what we're going to have to put some things down on that page and Drake start your list because there could be a lot of things like tomorrow I'm going to do this tomorrow I'm going to start doing this we don't have to wait to January the 1st we can start today y'all and you know what one thing is I know the youth I've heard them talk about is raising your hands do you know the greatest thing you could do is say tomorrow? Or what about tonight? Can you raise your hands tonight? Raise your hands tonight. He is so worthy of our praise.
worthy. Allie, raise your hand. He is worthy of our praise. And just if you want to put, put under there on that piece of paper for you, go say, Lord, I'm going to raise my hands because you touched Uncle Mark. Or, Lord, I'm going to raise my hands because all my family's here. Lord, I'm going to raise my hand. So it's just a lot of things that I was thinking about today. Don't wait till January the 1st and start thinking about this. Think about it now. If we want to be a sanctuary, we've got to start making steps and decisions, decisions that will get us closer to him. And it, it went into say in this book, my goodness, she knew I needed this. There's power once you make these decisions. There's power in your decisions. And you can make two, there's two kinds of decisions. There's a good one and there's a bad one. Let's make the good ones, y'all. God deserves us to make the best decisions. And I just want to do that, Brother White. I love him. And so today, every, my goal yesterday, too, was when my mind starts thinking of negative and I feel like I'm not worthy or I'm, I'm finished, you know, I didn't realize. Some, no one told me that when I retired, Sister Peggy, that I was going to feel like I was finished. I see Brother Al laughing back there. But I'm not finished. So my goal to, for today was that when my mind started working on me, I was either going to go look at my prayer board. I love that prayer board, y'all. That was the best thing that ever happened because you know what I've got on the very top section? All the things that I'm thankful for. And so what I went in there and started saying, Thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you for the church you brought me to, Lord. Thank you for the body of Christ, the ministry, Lord. And I just started thanking you, thanking him for all the things he's done for me. I love you. I love all of you. Love you all. I want us all to go together. Brother White, you know what? There is a world out here that is becoming very sinful. But, you know, when they get into trouble... There's a light on Lily Street here in Nacogdoches. I don't know how the light's shining in the other churches, but I can tell you right here, Lily Street, there's a light shining, and people are seeing this light. Praise the Lord, because we want to be a sanctuary. We want to be a live vessel for the Lord. I just appreciate him tonight. just to testify more, some of you, I haven't testified this year, the year's almost over, 
Do y'all realize that? How many, how many services we have left? Can y'all count them up? Three services? Three services. Ryan, have you testified this year? Once? What? Some of you are running out of time. Running out of time. The clock is ticking. As Sister Tubby was saying there about our list, we ought to we ought to be thinking about what the Lord is expecting. I uh, I want to say something about our program. I, I just was blown away. Just amazed at the the quality of of the program, the quality of our of our band. We we ought to charge admission. We could we could charge admission next year, and and uh, there's folks that would pay money to 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 see a program of this quality and this value. And and as Sister Tubby has said that. Many, many of the folks in the community were, were we, we used to have to really invite them to come, but this, uh, they, they ask us, when is y'all's Christmas program? When, when, are y'all, when are y'all getting together? And so we're, we're glad. And if, if this light, let me, let me tell you how important it is that you shine your light. You you may be you may be the only light that somebody ever sees. You may you may be the only light that that someone in your family, some of your friends, some of your acquaintances. Uh, there there was people here that I didn't know who they were, and so if if your light shines and somebody sees your light, you you have been a you have been a witness for the Lord, and 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 you may. <clears throat> That person may not come to God right away, but somewhere down the road, they'll remember. They'll remember something that touched their heart. They'll remember uh, a song or, or a message or something you did, your act of kindness. So let your light shine before men that they I quoted this scripture, that they may see your good works. I want them to see you doing good things. Uh, I don't want anybody to see you do something bad. Not that I don't think any of y'all do anything bad. Not at all. Dwight, y'all improved a whole lot. Uh, he has. I, I, I pick on him a lot, but he, he's, I've known him a long time. Uh, his, his path, listen, he, he's made some goals. He's made some goals and achieved those goals. I, I hope you achieve your goals. So otherwise, and that's why it's important to write them down. Otherwise, they're just a dream. If you write them down, they become a goal. If you don't write them down, they're just a dream. You can say, well, I, it's just a beam dream. Uh, but this song that said, Lord, prepare me. Prepare me. And and. These, these, and I think it's the 12 days prior to Christmas, and there's a song, isn't it, the 12 days of Christmas? But that, that song actually came from, from the religious world that, that, that takes the 12 days prior to Christmas, and they call it the Advent period. It means the time of, of, of preparation leading up to the birth of Christ. And so as, as the... The natural world was preparing for the birth of Christ, and just as the natural world now is preparing to celebrate the birth of Christ, as there was this time of preparation, and 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 just as the the song and the story that we sang, that there was there was no place, there was no place for for the Lord to lay His head. There wasn't a, there wasn't a place prepared. For him, and, and, and there's not a place for this man child. Listen, Jesus was a man child, and there's a man child that's going to be delivered here one day, and, and it's an overcoming, it's an overcoming people. And, and this man child is going to, is paying to be delivered, and, and there's there's no place for this 
man child to be born. There's a time of preparation. So that's where we are right now. You're in a time of preparation. And and we we've had some outstanding uh I want to touch a little bit on the last week. Was it last week when we didn't have Wednesday night service? There was a, a minister's meeting that I had, had almost forgotten about, and, and it was in Louisville. And so I, I, when we canceled Wednesday night service, I, I decided to go. So in the last minute, uh, uh, I told my wife if she could get me a ticket, I'd go. So I, she got a ticket pretty quick. I guess she wanted me to go. Uh, but I was privileged to be in in the minister's meeting there at the convention center. And, and it was, wasn't was a large meeting. It was more of a regional minister's meeting. But I, I felt uh, the need and the uh, necessity to be there. And the opportunity was available. And so I, I went and... and, and <sighs> developing relationships with some brethren that I, I haven't got to know very much. I, I sat between Brother Roger Stevenson, the pastor there in Indianapolis, and then I sat between him and Brother Chris Urbano, the pastor there in Elizabethtown, and, and I, I got to spend some time with these brethren and, and got to know them and, and got to feel their spirit and, and Every time that, that the ministry comes together, it, it's productive and profitable, and I, I'm just glad for the opportunity to be there. And then this past weekend, we had the, the dedication service of the, the new building there in Hemp Hill. Where Brother Crawford and Brother Hansel were working, Brother Dickey, and we had a wonderful gathering there, wonderful meeting, and so privilege to, to have these opportunities and then to come here this past weekend as Sister Tubby said so many of the community uh, were blessed this, this church listen this church is, a, is a, a bright and shining light in a dark world and so keep doing what you're doing keep keep allowing uh, the Lord to use you I, I had a couple of things in the minister's meeting that I wanted to I wanted to, to reiterate there brother peach brother john peach said that that he said you only love the lord as much as you love your worst enemy that's that, i had to i got him to repeat it he said that your love for the lord is only as great as your love for your worst enemy i don't have any enemies uh, that I know of I may have some folks that don't think I'm as sparkling as I think I am uh, I know of one place I found it written under a house I found my name written under a house uh, I can take you to the address it's 408 North Mound Street uh, and it's right under the crawl space and Someone described what they thought about me. Uh, so that person is not an enemy, but I'm not one of his fans. I promise you, judging by what he wrote about me. Um, but Brother Pete said, our love for the Lord is, is only as, as deep as our love for the person that we dislike the most. I thought that, that's, that's something to ponder and to consider and and I appreciated that. You know, in, in, in these ministers' meetings, years, years ago, we had what we called the thrashing floor. And it, and it was exactly that. It was a thrashing floor. But it was supposed to be a threshing floor with an E. Uh, but sometimes the differences in... in, in doctrines and opinions became so strong that that uh, men's spirit would, would become involved and it, it instead of it being a threshing a threshing floor was there uh, where they threshed out the wheat they would they would winnow the wheat and they would throw the 
the wheat up in the air and, and they had these big fans and these fans would, would blow the chaff. The husk and the hull uh, were lighter than the grain and that fan would blow the husk and the hull and the chaff away and the, and the grain would fall down and the grain would be harvested. And so that was the that was Ornan's threshing floor. It's where the wheat was winnowed. And, and, and we, we went through a period in, in the minister's meeting where uh, our doctrines were, were so important. But in this minister's meeting, it, it's Brother Dave's, Brother Dave's, and, and it's amazing. He, he's up in years and doesn't move very fast, but when he gets up, there's such an authority that comes from his words and, and he said that, that we're not trying to see who is right we're just trying to see what is right and as long as we have that spirit as long as we have that spirit about us even on our, on our local level uh, most of the time it, it's because we want to be right and the fact I don't think I've ever been wrong uh, and most of you are of that same opinion. You don't think you've ever been wrong. But it's not about me being right. It's about us treating each other right. It's about how we treat each other. It's about how we treat each other. And these, these words have been going over in my mind. And we, we I know we, we took more than one maybe three lessons trying to get through the, the subject of charity but, but we, we could spend we could spend months on the, on the subject of charity and, and then and then the Lord dealt with me on this word humility humility how how we have to have in brother, brother Akka's message here when he came the other night about the, the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you, and, and he told us that the key, the key, sometimes you get keys. Keys unlock things. Keys unlock things that have you imprisoned. So most of the, most of the things that have us imprisoned, you, you have access to the key. You just got to find it. You just got to find the right key. And so... To find the mind of Christ is, is to, to have a meek and humble spirit, a, a, a humility. And, and the Lord doesn't wake me up often, but, but the other morning I, he, he, I couldn't go back to sleep. And this, this word, and this word, and it's not a popular word, not popular. This, this, this is almost a bad word that none of us like. We like charity because we, we, we can put on charity and we like to think that we're humble. Well, that guy, they, Brother Bud tells that story about that guy that got the award for being so humble. He got the award of being the most humble man. And then he, he was proud he got the award. And... Uh, okay to laugh that's, that's a joke but this, this, this word that came to me is, is, is submit submit and, and, and it, it, it's a bad word it's a bad word and, but I, I want to I, I want to talk on it just a little uh, if I can And we we've, we've gone over this scripture in, in Philippians second uh, Philippians two the the about the mind of Christ, but Jesus said he he found himself found himself in in the fashion of a man and and he didn't just wake up and, and realize one day that that I'm I'm a man. We have we have a world of people that's waking up and 
deciding they don't want to be a man or they don't want to be a woman. So they're, they're getting the pick. But Jesus said he found himself in the fashion of a man. That just means he, he, he knew that, that he was, he was a, 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 a shoe leather walking uh, Jewish young man. But, but here, here's the key of that scripture. It said he humbled himself. He humbled himself, you know, and, 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 and this, this word submit. And, and most of the time, and, and you guys, I know where y'all are thinking, the scriptures y'all are thinking, most of us guys, when we, when we read the word submit, we want to go to Ephesians 5 and 21 and Colossians 3. Right, and we want to read the scripture where, where it says that the, that the wives should submit themselves to the husband. And all the men said, Amen. amen. So we, they, they amen that. They, they, the men love that. And so, but they quit reading right there. Uh, but it goes on down to say that, that, that men love your wives as Christ loved the church. What does it tell us to do? Gave themselves for it. Uh, but Jesus said, being found in the fashion of the man, he humbled himself. And, and, and submission, submission has to come from within. And in and, and Psalms, I think it's the 68th Psalm, you know, we're, we're all, you're all going to submit to something, like it or not. I'd just it's been a little while ago but I, I submitted to the law of gravity I sister Tommy I jumped I jumped out of the back of my pickup over the side of it I guess I thought I was 30 years old and I, I sailed over the side of the pickup and when I hit the ground my knees buckled and folded up and, and, and I submitted to the law of gravity whether I liked it or not. Luckily nobody was looking. I dusted myself off and got up and, and limped back around to the truck. But whether I agree with it or not, whether I agree with the law of gravity or not, I'm going to have to submit to it. And, and, and David in Psalms, I think, let's turn to Psalm 68 chapter. The scripture, 68. Yeah, 68 and 3. Like I said, some things you're going to submit to. You're going to submit to the, to the, to time. And the right, 168 and 3. No, that's not it. It's, it's where it says he submitted. That may not be the right one. See if you can find this scripture. It says where he, his enemy submitted to his greatness. But you're, listen, you're going you're gonna to submit to time. I, I, in my mind, on, on this side of these eyes, I still think I'm in my 30s and 40s. But when I sailed over the side of that pickup, I realized that I had to submit to time and gravity. Yes, I don't know if that's it. What is it? 60? 66 and 3. Let's try that one. Yes. 66 and 3. They got my numbers out of place. Psalm 66 and 3. It says, Through thy greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Whether if 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 we don't want to submit to the to the to the laws of God, you know, we don't have to until his power until his power just as these enemies these enemies submitted through the greatness to the power of the Lord time gravity physics you, you're, you'll have to submit yourself whether you like it or not to the law of physics and 
then the last one, we're all going to submit ourselves to the grave. But Jesus said that he submitted himself. And I, and I, want, to, I want to, these scriptures that, that came out to me, and here we are, we're, we're not celebrating the crucifixion of Christ, but we're celebrating the birth of Christ. But these, and I had to consult with my, with my English teacher, uh, I had Stuart ask his mother, who was an English teacher, how, how to define a certain piece of punctuation. And, and, and this is the scriptures that, that was coming to me the other morning, that, that Jesus, Jesus when, he, when he was on the, on the, on the, the road, on the, the hill of Golgotha, headed to the cross, and he'd ask his disciples to pray with him a while, and, and, and as he said, he was praying with great drops of blood, and he asked the Lord, and, and it's recorded in the three Gospels of, of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And in each place, each place, Jesus asked, said, Could, if, if it be thy will, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And, and, it's, and it's, the, it's described a little bit in each of the three Gospels, but, but the following part, following part and, and it's in it's in Matthew 26 and 39 and here in Luke 24 22 and 42 saying father if if thou be willing remove this cup from me I want you to see those two little dots right there see those two little dots hold your finger there and and and, and I want to I want to I want to explain something to you King, King James commissioned, I think he, he, he commissioned 55 different scholars and 47 of them responded and 47 scholars interpreted or uh, translated the, the, the Greek and the Hebrew writings into, into the English language. And there was 13, 13 scholars that worked on, on the Gospels. They worked on the Gospels in the book of Revelations, 13 different scholars, and they were, they were all officed in different places. Uh, he commissioned them and gave them different sections and portions of the Bible, and I don't know who worked on what portion, but there was 13 different scholars that interpreted, translated the, the Greek and the Hebrew into the English language. And and And... And I want you to notice in, in all three writings, in, in Matthew and in Mark and Luke, as and this is in Matthew, and he said he went a little further and, and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. I want you to notice those two little dots. And and his his second part of his plea there is the same in each in each writing. It said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not as my will, but as thou will. And, and if you want to look in Mark 14 and 36, Yes. And he said, Abba, Father, all these things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. There's those two little dots. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. And, and, and I don't know why, I don't know why that was so significant that, 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 in each of the writings written, recorded by, by three different men and interpreted by obviously different men, that each, each of the writers would put these conjunctive semicolons or colons in there that, that connected two different thoughts. And I, and I had, I, I want to, uh, I think I wrote down the, the definition. It said a colon is, is, is after an introduction and before an explanation. 
Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. And, and I'm saying all of this to show that, that Jesus had to submit his will. And, and, and we, we've talked on charity and humility, and this is another jawbreaker of, of submission. Of submission. And, it, and it's critical as, as you prepare, as this song says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You know that Jesus had to prepare himself for the cross? You know, he had to prepare himself for the cross. He, he, he had to get his mind, had to get his mind uh, prepared. And, 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 and he, he's, he's up to the point. He's up to this point that he has to make a decision. Jesus has to choose. Am I going to go the way of the cross and, 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 and salvage mankind? He, he, said, he said, can you take this from me? Can you take this from me? And each of the writers put those same marks there, that same colon. They introduced, that. listen, it, it was two complete thoughts, but it was still connected together. They didn't put a period there. Jesus could have put a period there. He could have said, take this cup from me, period. What's that scripture Brother Bud always used? Where, it's, where John was writing, said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. And he said, if he didn't put that comma there, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. And someone said, Grandma was fixing supper. They said, Grandma, let's eat. Or Grandma, comma, or, or let's eat, comma, grandma. If I didn't put that comma there, to say let's eat, grandma. So the power, the power of punctuation, and, and these, these two dots, these two dots connected two different thought patterns. The first one was, and it would be what I was asking. If it's possible, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Do I have to go this way? And that's the question that you need to ask as, as we go down this road of preparation, this, this time leading up to the, to the advent, to the, to the preparation time for the, for the birth of Christ, for the birth of a man-child. You, you have to see that, that Jesus is trying to prepare a man-child. A man-child is, is, is a ruling class of people and it's not to rule over anybody listen I've, I've spent the last 40 years telling people what to do I'm so tired of telling people what to do I'm not looking to tell anybody what to do but I am looking to be a part of an overcoming class not to overcome anything but to overcome this this fleshly house and I, I, I would ask and, and I'm asking Lord can, can this cup pass from me this cup passed from me. And all of us are going to have this moment that we'll have to ask, can this cup pass from me? But you'll need to be able to put that colon. You'll need to put those two little dots at the end of your request. And then you'll need to have to say, you'll need to be able to say the same thing that Jesus said at the Garden of Gethsemane. Nevertheless, not my will. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. If you can say that, then you can say that I'm truly a submissive person. We all have to be submissive to something. If you're an employee, you've got to be submissive to your employer. If you think you're the boss, there's always somebody that's going to tell you what to do. Somebody's going to tell you what to do. If you don't believe it, just don't pay your taxes, and Uncle Sugar is going to tell you what to do. Somebody's going to tell you what to do. So if we can be submissive to the Word of God, if we can be submissive to the Word of God, these, these all of, there, there's several, there's several brethren that are out of several men that are out of town tonight. You know, all of them, all of them send messages and and and, and let everybody know where they are. They don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. But they do it out of, out of respect and out of submission. to, And it says that, that we are to be subject one to another. One to another. 
and 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 it it's just it just does something to your spirit. Sister Tubby hit on something that's very important, very important, very important. Listen, if you if you want God to bless you, he he needs to know that that he's first. He needs to know he's first. You can tell him, tell him, Lord, I love you. He wants you to show it. He wants you to show it. You can tell your kids you love them. Frankie, you tell them kids you love them all day, but if you don't feed them and clothe them, they're not going to believe you. Yeah, they won't believe you. Tell the Lord I love you. Well, he, he wants a little proof in the pudding. Lord, I want to go. Lord, I want to go. We all sing that song. Do you want to go? Show me the way. That's, that's the next verse, isn't it? Lord, show me the way. Well, I'm trying to show you the way. How do I get there? You're going to have to be humble. You're going to have to be submissive. And, and if you wait for me to make you do it, it'll be wasted time. If you wait for someone to hammer on you, it'll be wasted time. I build my wife a fire just about every night. If it gets below 60 degrees, we've got to have a fire. And a lot of times I'm burning up. But she loves the fire. I do it because she loves it. And I do it because I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to serve the Lord. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being found in the fashion of a man. And you found yourself in the fashion of the man. And what did Jesus do? Humble himself. Humble himself. And you'll have to humble yourself. This message, this message ought to change you. None of us up here can change anybody. Brother Acker told us that. That the, the gifts of the ministry for the edifying of the church and for the perfecting of the saints, he said nobody can perfect anybody. There's not a minister that can perfect anybody. But he can give you some tools. This is a tool. This is a tool to help you. It's not one that you're going to enjoy. Being submissive. You're not going to enjoy that. But the rewards. The rewards. When they say that the benefits of serving God is out of this world. Yeah. They're eternal. So charity, charity, we have to put it on because it won't always fit. Charity won't always fit. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Some clothes you put on are just too tight. They're restrictive. They're uncomfortable. Charity is that way. You need to put it on. And after a while, it gets more comfortable because you get rid of some flesh. If your clothes are too tight, you may need to get rid of some flesh. They feel a little better. Charity's that way. We need to get rid of some flesh. Humility's that way. He said, God resists the proud. What does He do? He gives grace to who? To the humble. We're to be subject and submissive one to another. Amen. If it be Thy will, if it be Thy will, let this cup pass from me. Colon. Nonetheless, not my will but thy will be done. Praise God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, help me to be submissive to your will. Help me. And, and, and you, we, we, we just had this wonderful lesson on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Help me to have your mind, Lord. Touch my mind. Touch my mind. Praise God. Touch my mind. I appreciate the Lord. Tonight, I appreciate him for dealing with us. I appreciate this time of the year. Uh, and, and, and if we can get people to think about him once a year, we need to do everything we can. And maybe next year we can get them to think about t maybe twice a year. Whenever you, whenever you can get them to think about God, it's good. Who was it that said, wherever you find God, it's a good thing? Who said that, Brother Tubby? Brother, Brother Leniger. So wherever we can feel God, Wherever you can witness for the Lord, it's good. So let your light 
so shine before men. They saw some good works here Sunday. This community saw some good works. Uh, listen, listen, you you can you can put on some things. These these where is Faith? Is she here? I wasn't real sure that was her. What what was that person's name? Ain't Betty Lou. I had to, I wasn't real sure that was her. But this was wonderful. Uh, what a, what an outreach. What a, what a community outreach. Uh, felt like it was successful. I think the, there's one other thing that, that I, I, I got out of the minister's meeting that, that's worthy to write down. It said a healthy body, a healthy body, natural and spiritual, accumulates assimilates and eliminates. The healthy body has to accumulate nutrition. You can gather up all of the broccoli and turnip greens and protein and you can put it all on the table and look at it. it it'll look good but until you assimilate it, until you assimilate it into you, and, and, and the same thing is with this Word of God. Uh, we, we can stand up here and we can preach till midnight, and we can put it all on the table, but, but it's up to you to assimilate it. It's up to you to, to put it into your being, who you are. And then a healthy body has to eliminate the things that aren't healthy. So this, this a healthy body will, will accumulate, assimilate, and eliminate. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Good to be here tonight. I, I've, I debated on having Bible study, but we've, we've been out of church so long. I was afraid some of you back to dipping snuff. So I figured we need to come in here and try to get you encouraged again. Uh, so we're... we're Glad to be here tonight, glad to be, uh, and I know uh, we're coming up on the holidays, uh, we have our our Christmas meal, didn't y'all, wasn't, wasn't it decorated nice in, in, the, in the Family Life Center, wasn't that, wasn't that beautiful, the decorations, Sister Willis and others decorated the tables up, I, it, it was almost like a dinner and a movie. It was a dinner and a play. Uh, but we're, we're going to eat in there this coming Sunday. We left the tables up and so we're, we're, we're blessed. Aren't we blessed to have this, this wonderful facilities? Do y'all, are, are, do y'all realize how blessed we are? I, I go to, we go to a lot of churches, a lot of churches that, that aren't blessed with, with, with all these noisy youngins. Uh, some places it's quiet as a funeral home. Uh, you're not sure if you're at church or a funeral. His son is, is the pastor of, of a church in Cycle, and, and he's such a good man. I mean, he, he is a wonderful, wonderful uh, God-fearing man that teaches the Word of God. I listened to his services, uh, and and he was here with us. And and I saw he had to leave to get back. They were preparing some baskets for the needy, and so. But I I appreciate Brady Willis. I appreciate him uh, coming and being with us. And and then we had a we had Pastor Mike Davis uh, that was here with us. We listen we. We raised our kids together, and now we're raising our grandkids together. Uh, we've been friends for many, many years, and, and I appreciated them coming. And wasn't there another minister here uh, that from Douglas who that um, his name will come to me when I sit down? Um, but uh, I, 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 it, it it pleases me in the word proud. I guess I can use it, uh, as long as we use it right. Uh, proud of this church. 
proud of this church. We, you're, you're doing a good job. When your friends and your co-workers and your classmates and your family want to come be with you in church, let me tell you, you're doing something right. You're doing something right. So keep doing what you're doing. We, we're going to... Uh, we had some folks say that, that they, they just can't wait. They just can't wait. They said they'll, they'll, they'll be here next year. So uh, praise God. Bless the Lord. Good to be here tonight.
prayer before we leave. It's uh, Brandon Corman over here. He's got John Thomas's grandson. He's got this uh, welding shop over here. Y'all know I spent countless hours with John talking the Word of God. He visited us several times. Just never could get him nailed in here. <laughs> I didn't do something right. But his grandson is. You'll get the witness to him in the resurrection. Yep. I'd like to help him finish his course. Uh, there's a guy that works for his grandson, Brandon, over here. The guy's name is David Maynard. Uh, got a wife and two young kids. See? did surgery on him here a couple of weeks ago. He's got cancer in his mouth. Uh, I'd like the church to remember this young man. I've talked to him and witnessed to him a lot. I've never, I ain't doing something right. I've never been able to get him here. But I, I told Brandon to send him word that we was going to pray for him. So I'd like for y'all to write his name down, David Maynard. Jody's having surgery, and then my sister Rita the Gale, they something blood work or something's not right or something. Was waiting, and they were going to do some kind of surgery on her to get better circulation in her legs, something to do with her heart and something I don't know. I just liked eight years graduating from medical school, and but they was going to do something, but her blood levels and stuff is messed up, and so they're not able to do the surgery. So, I'd like the church to remember her, my sister. They rescheduled it for December twenty-first, as of right now. So what, brother? They rescheduled her surgery for December twenty-first, as of right now. Okay, I, I knew she. I saw something where it was either the eighteenth or the twenty-first. So for right now, they've rescheduled it to the for the twenty-first of December. So, I'd like for us to remember her. Sam's brother is doing better, still in recovery, or well, they woke him. They woke him up and then put him back to sleep, right? Okay. Remember, what's his first name? David. David, David Ramos. Y'all remember him? Who, who else? Yeah, Stephanie Baker. What about Randy? He's still, he's still pretty good. Randy. has pneumonia. Sister Kathy had her brother's memorial today, so she got in late, so she's not here. Uh, okay. Y'all 
hear all these needs and requests. I'm sure by the raise of our hands, we all have. So let's take them to the Lord. Lord, you will be right. 